Hi there, it's Jeff here with a video on sunk costs. Now, a sunk cost is a cost that can't be recovered in whole or in part if a business decides to leave a market or an industry. And the existence of high sunk costs tends to make a market less contestable. The key thing about a sunk cost, once you've spent money on something, it's in that sense it's sunk. And it shouldn't really affect future decisions because you can't be changed regardless of what you decide to do next. So these sunk costs are often contrasted with variable costs, avoidable costs, which can be influenced by future actions. A couple of examples, if you, if you pile money, half a million pounds, let's say, into a marketing campaign, well, regardless of its success or failure, that expense can't be undone. So therefore, in a sense, it's a sunk cost. Think about the, the whole area of drug research. So a pharma company might spend many years, perhaps tens of millions of dollars or more, on developing and testing a drug. Well, if the drug fails to get final regulatory approval, it can't go to market. And those costs are essentially sunk. You've sunk money into that idea, that drug, but it shouldn't really influence decisions on future projects. Now, in a market where the sunk costs are high, that can deter new entrants. If you think about industries like pharmaceuticals, aviation, telecommunications, they often require huge upfront investment in infrastructure, plant and equipment. Now, that may not be recoverable if the business fails. So in industries with very high sunk costs, this reduces contestability. Potential new entrants are wary of the risks. In contrast, when there are minimal sunk costs, when the exit barriers are really quite low, think about freelancing, think about pop-up retailing, etc., then contestability tends to be higher because new firms, new suppliers can enter and exit the market with relative ease, fairly low cost. There's also something called the sunk cost fallacy. Let's spend a minute on that. Now, the sunk cost fallacy occurs when people or organisations continue to invest, continue to put money into a decision or project based on the amount they've already spent rather than doing a cold calculating evaluation of current or future value future value. So the sunk cost fallacy is a cognitive bias and it can lead to irrational decision making. A couple of examples in personal relationships. If you stay in a toxic toxic relationship because we've been together for X number of years, that's a good example of the sunk cost fallacy. I should have no bearing. It's about the future that matters. Business projects. Businesses continue to invest in a failing project. I can think of a couple of examples myself because of prior investments rather than making yeah, the tough decision to cut losses and reallocate scarce resources. And gambling. A gambler continues to betting to win back money they've already lost. OK, they're trying to claw back their losses rather than saying, well, look, I've got to cut my losses. Uh, and they're tending to ignore the probabilities of future losses mounting as well. So sunk cost, really key idea. You dissociate it with contestable markets and the sunk cost fallacy, you would link in with behavioural bias and departures from rational decision making. Thanks for joining in.